We're diving deep today into Project 2025, a conservative roadmap spearheaded by the Heritage Foundation. Think of it as a blueprint for a potential Republican administration to reassert its vision on America. Now on the surface, this might sound like standard political maneuvering. Every think tank wants its policies in the Oval Office. But Project 2025, with figures like Rick Dearborn, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff at the helm, signifies something different. It's bolder, more ambitious, and perhaps more concerning. Let's talk about Rick Dearborn. Now, Dearborn has been in the trenches of Washington politics for decades, serving as Chief of Staff to Senators, a top aide on Capitol Hill, and most notably, Deputy Chief of Staff to President Trump. This isn't some ivory tower academic, Dearborn's contribution to the book Mandate for Leadership, and specifically to Project 2025, comes from a place of hard-won experience. He understands the inner workings of power better than most. And as he puts it, from popular culture to academia, the American presidency has long been a prominent fixture of the national imagination. Naturally so, since it is the beating heart of our nation's power and prestige. Dearborn knows firsthand that the presidency isn't just a symbol. It's a complex machine, and to make that machine work, you need the right people in the right places. Which brings us to the role Dearborn highlights as absolutely crucial. The White House Chief of Staff. He states, and I quote, Of all presidential staff members, the chief is the most critical to implementation of the president's vision for the country. Think about that for a moment. Not the cabinet secretaries, not the agency heads, but the chief of staff. Why? Because the chief of staff is essentially the president's right hand, managing both, managing both the White House office, the nerve center of the presidency, and the executive office, which encompasses all those advisory bodies and agencies directly serving the president. Dearborn emphasizes the importance of structure. The chief of staff needs to establish clear lines of authority within the White House office. Who reports to whom? Who has access to the president? Who speaks for the administration on specific issues? Without that, you have chaos, competing agendas, mixed messages, and equally important is establishing clear points of contact with external entities the Department of Justice, the State Department, all the way down the line. The Chief of Staff ensures that the President's agenda flows smoothly through the bureaucracy, that there's follow-through, accountability, because it doesn't matter what brilliant policies are dreamt up if they get stuck in the gears of government. But the Chief of Staff can't do it all alone. That's where the key players within the White House office come in and Dearborn is very specific about the roles they need to play. First, you have the Deputy Chiefs of Staff. Now, depending on the administration, there might be several, each with their own area of focus. One might handle day-to-day -day White House operations, making sure the lights stay on, so to speak. Another might be focused on policy development, coordinating with experts and agencies. These are the Chief of Staff's lieutenants, trusted advisors who keep things running smoothly. Then you have the senior advisors. This is where things get interesting. These individuals often have a long history with the president, a close relationship built on trust and shared ideology. They wield significant influence, and their portfolios can be broad, covering anything from foreign policy to communication strategy. The key here Dearborn stresses is clearly defined roles. Without them, you get turf wars, conflicting advice, and a president pulled in multiple directions. Now the White House counsel, this isn't just some legal eagle tucked away in a corner office. This is the president's lawyer, providing guidance on everything from executive orders to treaties to potential scandals. As Dearborn puts it, the White House counsel needs to be deeply committed both to the president's agenda and to affording the president proactive counsel and zealous representation. They're there to protect the president, yes, but also to protect the office of the presidency itself. And then we have a role that often flies under the radar, the staff secretary. This isn't a glamorous position, but it's absolutely essential. 
The staff secretary is the information gatekeeper, managing the flow of documents, memos, briefing materials to and from the Oval Office. They decide what the president sees, when they see it, and what context is provided. Dearborn emphasizes that this person needs to be an honest broker, someone who presents information objectively and doesn't filter it based on personal bias or political expediency. You can see how crucial this role is, right? It can be easily weaponized. Now, a president can have the best staff in the world, the sharpest minds, the most loyal advisors, but without the ability to communicate effectively with the American people, with Congress, with the world, it's all for nothing. That's where the communication and outreach arm of the White House comes in. And within Project 2025, we see this area as particularly critical. They envision a tight control over messaging, ensuring that everyone sings from the same hymnal. First and foremost, you have the Office of Communications. These are the folks responsible for shaping and delivering the president's message through speeches, press releases, social media, you name it. Dearborn stresses the importance of a unified message. He's seen firsthand how mixed messages and off-the-cuff remarks can derail an entire agenda. The press secretary, often the public face of the administration, plays a vital role here. They need to be credible, articulate, and able to handle the often hostile questioning of the White House press corps. Think back to some of the most memorable press secretaries in history. Their words mattered. They could sway public opinion, calm a crisis, even shape the narrative of a presidency. Then, of course, you have the speechwriting team. They might not be in the spotlight, but they're crafting the words that define a presidency. Every word the president utters, every policy announcement, every address to the nation is meticulously crafted to convey a specific message. Dearborn knows that words have power, and in the wrong hands that power can be misused. But communicating with the public is only part of the equation. The White House also needs to work with Congress to build consensus and pass legislation. That's where the Office of Legislative Affairs comes in. Dearborn describes them as the bridge between the White House and Capitol Hill, ensuring that lawmakers are kept in the loop, that the president's priorities are understood, and that any potential roadblocks are identified early on. He states, as is the case with many White House offices, but especially the Office of Communications, the OLA must ensure that congressional leaders receive one unified message. It's about managing relationships, building coalitions, and playing the game of politics effectively. But governing isn't just about talking to lawmakers. It's about building relationships with the people who elect them. And Dearborn knows this. The White House needs to maintain a direct line to the president's base, to keep the party machinery humming, to mobilize support for their agenda. And that's where the Office of Public Affairs comes in. Think of them as the political arm of the White House. They're in constant contact with party leaders, strategizing on how to sell the president's message, how to counter the opposition, how to frame the narrative in a way that resonates with core voters. This is about more than just winning elections. It's about maintaining a sense of momentum, cultivating a climate of support for the president's policies, even when those policies are controversial. And finally, we have the Office of Public Liaison. These folks have a unique and often underestimated role, building bridges to various interest groups, from industry leaders to labor unions to advocacy organizations. This isn't just about glad-handing and photo ops. It's about listening to concerns, identifying areas of common ground, and building coalitions to support the president's agenda. Because even the most powerful person in the world needs allies. No president can govern effectively without understanding the needs and desires of the people they represent. What's fascinating about Project 2025, and particularly in Dearborn's chapter, is how much emphasis is placed on these outreach efforts. It's not enough to have the right policies. You need to sell those policies to the American people, to Congress, to stakeholders across the political spectrum. It's a strategic, coordinated campaign to shape public opinion 
and build support for a specific vision of America. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. I love hearing from you, so drop a comment below and let's keep the conversation going. Share this video with your friends to help spread the word. Thank you and see you in the next one.